King's College, Cambridge, has so much meaning in my life and my family's life because my brothers and I were all choristers in, in the choir. And those early formative years of singing in that iconic space with Stephen Cleavery has been the most wonderfully fulfilling experience. So when I started planning this journey to Rome, initially it was inspired by the tricentenary of the cello. And the idea really was to take the instrument on a journey. And King's was an obvious choice because it's a place where I first began making music. So in a way, to start the journey in King's was a different kind of homecoming. We're taking the cello to, to Rome, which is where it was made, but also starting somewhere that, that I guess in my musical life had been a really major part. Something that we really focused on when we decided to launch the King's College label was the need to make every record that we produce have a purpose. And when Guy approached us with this album focused on his cello, we, we knew immediately that this was the, the perfect thing to launch a series of recordings. There was a piece that I performed with Kings during their televised Christmas carol service. I said to Stephen, well, if we're going to make this work, what about Ola Yela's Serenity? Because it, it went down so well, it was quite rare in the service to have an instrumentalist joining the choir. In fact, I was reading uh, what he wrote at the, at the front of the score, which says, with Serenity, I wanted to write a cappella music that has a symphonic, abundant feel. I love a warm, lush sound that can give a feeling of space and evocativeness, but still be intimate somehow. But mainly, all I wanted to do with this piece was to write something that came straight from my heart without any pretense or filters. Today, just hearing the music, how it seems to just flow, he must have been incredibly inspired when he wrote it. It feels like a sort of musical home, really. Um, and so to play this piece uh, with Kings and just to hear the choir soaring up so high in the, in the middle of it, it makes your hair stand on end. So I hope, I hope people enjoy listening to it. And the Kings connections really go a bit further because my brother was a chorister at Kings and Tom Foster was an undergraduate studying music. I was thinking about collaborations and Hatfield House being the place where I played lots of chain music with my brother and also with Tom Foster, it seemed to me like an obvious choice. In the Marble Hall where we're performing Beethoven's Ghost Trio is just is such a vibrant acoustic and it's a space that was originally intended for musical performances. The CD needed to have variety, it needed to put the cello as well in very different roles and we'd performed the ghost quite a lot recently and decided that actually let's go for it in that space as well I think yeah the eeriness of the slow movement is is very fitting somehow in this extraordinary space. The Marble Hall we've had many experiences there very different acoustic we actually performed the ghost trio the night before we recorded it and we listened back the morning after, which was incredibly helpful to get a sense of what direction we wanted to go in. It's really quite a celebratory work, very celebratory. It's full of humour, whilst it's got moments of searching and reflection and, and darkness. The energy of particularly the, the opening of, and, and the last movement were just great fun to collaborate with my, with my great friend and, and brother. I really wanted to include the Royal Academy of Music in our journey to Rome. So we went and recorded a piece by Barrier for two cellos. And I was very keen to include Sheku Kani Mason, who is the recent winner of BBC Young Musician of the Year. Sheku also played on a, a Tekla cello belonging to a very kind supporter of this project. We were both commenting in the morning while we were playing how much they connected. Uh, they were definitely related. Barrier is the, the oldest work on the, on the CD. And it's nice to also include a piece that really comes from the 18th century. So we cover the whole 300 year span. Andrew Keener and Simon Eden have been with us 
uh, for the whole journey. It was a, a real eye-opener, I think, working with the Royal Academy of Music. A, to have these two cellists who were matched and two cellos that were matched. It was rather sweet because Guy is a former Young Musician of the Year winner mm. and uh, he came across not as the elder statesman at all. They were two lads enjoying mm. themselves. Mm. we recorded in the Royal Academy was um, Mark Simpson's piece for solo cello. Gosh, that was a hard That's piece. Really Tough hard. piece. The guy's stamina was absolutely astonishing. Yeah. Pushing the bounds of, of, of technical demand, mm. string playing, which he rose to fantastically. Mark's really using the entire range of the cello and challenging me, in this case, with what he's written. I know that he used part of DSCH from Shostakovich, having remembered seeing me perform the Shostakovich when he was growing up in the BBC competition. It was great to be approached not only to work with Guy from the point of a player who I knew, but also from this great instrument that he had and something that I could explore compositionally. We've known each other for a good amount of time and so it was great that he was willing to write this piece for this tricentenary. Bravo, come on. Golly gosh. <laughs> <laughs> So it's a usual morning in England, it's raining and it's surprisingly early today because we're recording at the Wigmore Hall two pieces by Charlotte Bray and David Matthews. In a way I found it a little bit tricky to think of how to approach writing a gift for a 300 year old cello um, but then I started playing around uh, with ideas about David Tekla's name and I started to translate his name into musical letters and that gave me some kind of harmonic structure to work with. All the way through working with Guy I found it a very natural collaboration. He almost challenges me as a composer and then we go back uh, to find the true kind of nature of the material. Um, and he's definitely had an impact on sections of the piece. He's leaving his fingerprints on it, so to speak. <laughs> I can see the sort of conceit where I would write a piece which was about the cello in the sense that showing everything that the cello could do. But I also wanted to make some link with the 300th anniversary by quotations. He finds something from Corelli in 1714, Beethoven in 1814, Ravel in 1914, and then his own music. He actually got in touch during the course of writing it saying, can you play this particular note at the top of the cello? And it turns out it's, it's a note, I think it's the last possible note, either just at the end of the fingerboard or just beyond. And I, and I said, look, write what you feel you need to write. He literally went as far as he could without tuning the strings differently. Any piece you write for someone like Guy, you, you want to give him some kind of challenge. You, know, you don't want to make it too easy. I mean, he just fulfills all my ideals for, for a cellist. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm so happy always to, to hear him play and to, and to work, be able to work with him. So I, I still feel like I'm dreaming. It's been on the horizon for so long, and here we are in this extraordinary place. We arrived last night, and so opening the windows this morning, we suddenly were just swept away by the noise and the buzz on the street, and the end is in sight of this journey to Rome. 
It's interesting as a producer watching two engineers who haven't met before talking to each other. Giacomo's English, of course, is perfect, but uh, our Italian is non existent. Lovely, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's such a variety of repertoire on the CD, and when I was thinking of Rome, Pines of Rome came to mind and Respighi, and I also remember uh, an old friend talking about this piece some time ago, saying, oh, you've got to play the Adagio con Variazioni. I have never really heard it before, and finally got round to sort of investigating it and thinking, wow, this just captures the spirit of Rome used to be the fact that single composer records were the thing. But this record is about a journey and therefore the theme is the cello and the wonderful cellist. You spend a lot of time on your own, practicing, working hard, and then you've got to get out there and share and communicate and bring people together, which is ultimately, I guess, the essence of what life and being a musician is all about. And I hope that that narrative on this CD is captured. It's basically a chance for me to be able to celebrate the fact that I have this immense support behind me that have in turn enabled me to go out there and do what I love. It's the story of travels with Sky's wonderful cello in its different settings. It's a sort of European gazetteer. In this age of jet travel, I think it urges one to reflect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.